Rooted in Love show. Life spoken from the roots of those who adapt to reach the sunlight. We stay rooted in love. We stay grounded. We get our strength from above. We stay rooted. We stay rooted in love. We stay grounded. We get our strength from above. We stay rooted. We stay rooted in love. We stay grounded. The Rooted in Love Show, hosted by Mario, Gerald, and Emmett Robinson. Welcome to the Rooted in Love Show. This is a special edition with the Robinson Boys. I'm Mario Robinson. I'm Gerald Robinson. Emmett Robinson. Yes, sir. We just hang, I'm hanging with the brothers today. Like we want to, we want to do an episode where we just really talk to the people about this show and and where it comes from. And I think that's really tied into just how we grew up, our background, like family, family, man. Yeah, just right. taking care of other people, taking care of family. Man, you know, I, y'all, I know y'all remember moms. Like we had so many families came through our house growing up. Everybody, like, and they could. I, I, I remember yeah. seeing mom cook a whole meal, right? And then people start coming in, she giving them bugs. And I'm looking like, man, ain't going to be no, we, don't like, we ain't going to get there to get set. <laughs> people you ain't even know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you no self-invite people you ain't even like. That's like just, just be the whole neighborhood, man. So we, we grew up yeah. watching stuff like that. And, just, yeah. and I think that, that became embedded in us at some point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was important, though. Uh, not only was it family, but it was friends. Oh, yeah. Everyone and it continued as, as, as we grew up. It just kept going. It, it kept going. And it was friends, and then what, what people got to understand too, this wasn't based on race. These just uh-huh. wasn't black friends. Mm-hmm. Oh, these, these the ones ones. that come over when you ain't even home. Right. <laughs> Those kind of friends. Right. Yeah, you be gone, they be like, yeah, I stopped by to see your mom the other day. Yeah. Or, or I, I've been out, even in my adult life, and people will ask me how my parents doing. I'm like, hey, did you, you know, know my parents? You know them. Yeah, like, how are your mom and dad yeah. doing? And then, then they know the address. They know where they live at. And, um, that just shows like all how many people that my parent the parent Im- impact just yeah. over the years. Yeah, multiple yeah. communities. But it's all over the place from from my, mind like, you, yeah. this is a place from not having much off the top. Right. Like it's not like it was a, a rich oh, yeah, from the beginning. Broken. So if we go all the way back to the beginning, old wheel road. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That, that, that's not that, that's not from a background of having so much. So I think from that we gather that it don't matter how much you got, you share. Yeah, yeah you are talking about a, a family of ten, yeah. eight yeah. kids, two parents, and and one only one working now from the yeah from only, start to finish. Only, my dad is the only one that ever worked, and then um, a three bedroom house is what we started out with. Yep, yeah, and we still yeah. always had somebody extra in there. Always feed somebody. Then you move to the apartments in Smyrna, Georgia. Yeah, and uh, the tradition just kind of continued. And we yeah. picked we picked up even more families and friends because mom would even more. since mom was always home she would keep kids so a lot of the parents in the apartment complex would drop their kids off in the morning so they can catch the bus with us and yeah. then after school they would come and stay until their parents got out of work and that was kind of one of her first hustles that I remember yeah. she yeah. made money like then she had the candy store too yeah I got candy. one of the guys' sons in my class right now really yeah oh, Murray's oh Murray's <laughs> son so that's crazy I stayed in the apartment uh next to ours. We was talking about that like our parents may be our first introduction to entrepreneurship. And yeah. and I really never really thought about it like that until we start thinking like mom Watching never yeah mom never really worked for nobody else but she always had money. She was the bank. She probably got something now. Yeah you know she got always got the bank. But she did that and, uh, we watched her we watched her keep keep her candy store Mm-hmm. Open and the inventory. If you think of yeah, yeah, yeah. So she did that. So she she had, uh, the, the, the baby when she was keep babysitting, mm-hmm. so she always kept kids for people. Yeah. Like she's raised, she's babysitting kids, and then they grew up had kids, and she's babysitting those kids. And it's like Damn. this generation, yeah. generation, generation, and uh, just to see that, and all those people still speak highly of her. Yeah, you know, like y'all said, she probably still got more money than most of us, just stashed away somewhere. <laughs> and and why she yeah. keeping them. I, I think part of that, as I got older, I was working when we'd be at home or whoever was around. You could see her. She would teach the kids whether or not they believe what we believe, or however it worked right. out in the family, our cultures, right, morals, and values. So you got some kids who go home 
and they may have a whole lot of profanity used in the house. Oh yeah, she might correct. You know, she would give them what we would get. The same, they they same gonna correct their parents. I'm really yeah. cool. uh, telling some parents if I can't this one, your kids, I can't keep them. Just like that, I can't pretend that if I can't this, one, I'm not gonna keep them. Yeah, but yeah, we we grew up watching that. Uh, even just even from dad's perspective, just watching him work like that is always just relentlessly work and figure out a way to bring money in. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know if y'all remember, I, I remember one time dad just pulled over all of a sudden on the side of the road. I'm trying to figure out what he's doing. He told me to get out the car and go get it was some aluminum hub caps. Go get them caps. Go get them caps. And, 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 and I'm embarrassed. Yeah, I'm embarrassed. I'm saying, dad, I don't want to do it. I'm about to cry now because I don't want to get out. Like, it's car going by and I don't want to get out to get these aluminum hub caps. <laughs> That's back when he was good money for aluminum. Yeah, he made me do it. He made me do it. So if dad wants to see like copper wiring, yeah. aluminum, yeah, uh, yeah, cardboard, remember the yeah. cardboard? I saw him melt the wire down and get that copper. They would get the boxes. So he, he taught us early how to go find money. I just go, it was no excuse. Uh -huh. For you to sit around and wait on some man to give you money or some job yeah. to give you money, if you need it, go go sell Find something. Way to get it, man. That hustle so, thing got down. That's good, man. right? So <laughs> now, oh, before I tell you, Lee, I was about to say that. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, all, all, all I know of him, we talking about hustling. Legally, legally, this legal, legally, this legal hustling. hustling. Legal. Yeah, this ain't no side side stuff and taking <clears> and stealing. <throat> no, no, yeah. none of that dope dealing and none of that. But I always yeah. seen a legal. Hustling. Yeah. And it was hard. The work he was doing was hard. And Labor. he might, he was. That's even harder than any other, I mean, better than any other lessons we had was seeing the ex, you know, old school dope man stop all that, let that go, and showing us how to do, do it the right way, right? Do it the right way, everything legal, and stay on that grind and always look out. Man, y'all remember him working at night? Yeah, man. For years. Work with him no, he was actually working more than at night. He was working like two jobs, two or three. Yes. Right. Yeah. I, I remember that a little bit. Oh, man, that was horrible. Because was, what was hard about that was he slept during the daytime. He was gone. But when we would come home, it was eight of us. So yeah. you, would, you would keep being like, be quiet. Y'all have to be quiet. Y'all have to wake your dad up. And, and that part right there was for kids. That was hard, and we had to learn how to adjust yeah. to that. Just, yeah. just being okay. We and we stayed outside. Y'all remember that? Yeah, like crazy. we was always All outside, time, right? Like I, I don't remember. Like I remember coming to school and you put on, you change your clothes, and you just be outside. Yeah, you do change your until clothes. it's time to. Yeah, don't you get out. Of <laughs> don't don't, don't change your clothes. Don't leave your school clothes on. Yeah. You know what it is. We just talked about that in uh, our Uncle Phil's episode yeah. about. Just uh, wearing those good clothes and going outside and play like that'll get you a good beat. Right? Oh, your good shoes. Oh, the shoes. Oh, we man. already didn't have that many good shoes. We probably growing up, you you had a pair of pair of shoes and a pair of sneakers. Yeah. It ain't like kids now. That's it. When that's you, it. When, when you say that's it, that means fifteen that's pair it. of shoes. <laughs> that's it. But yeah. he he would do that. Yeah, and and then not only working those jobs like that, working at night, sometimes working on weekend, he would get up. And still go to church. He he was traveling a lot. Oh yeah. So that that was extra. Money ain't about to travel. But well, the fact church. that he did. Man, did think about that now. If any of us could drive to Cochran, Georgia, or Augusta, Georgia, these these places that's three, four three hours, hours away. Yeah. Like I'm not talking yeah. about just on Sundays. I'm talking about sometimes we would go down on Saturday to help somebody. Yeah. And then we yeah. would we would stay at somebody like Mother Shaw's house or something like yeah. that and stay overnight. And we used to love that because she cooked good. Yeah. Go all the way down to the to the elder home just to see somebody pray over them a little bit, talk with them, and then come back. Right. And then you talk about during the week the Bible studies. Yeah. You know, and then only talk about like revival time. When it's a service every night, straight. and we can't afford to stay in the town, so right. you, you talking about services seven o'clock at night during the week. So after school, you got to immediately get in the car if you got to beat the traffic. Then you driving two and a half hours down, and you got you got to make it happen. Now just oh. just thinking about that though, from where we are, maybe from other people who are far too. I thought going to Lucas Temple was far. Oh, but yeah, with those things going on, Rizzo. Hey, we we got the next next we, one coming on in. We just we just yeah, doing this this. Yeah, come on in. Jump in. Jump in. Yeah, slide on in. Jump in. Yeah, slide on in. Yeah, jump in. We got big money coming. We in. We trying to sneak in. Man, don't want to try to sneak in. Excuse me. I've been working. Yeah, man. I got we were just talking about the working. Yeah, that 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 part of it right there. So we got one come in straight from work. Yeah, cause we won't talk about that too, cause I still, I still get that. I still get that a lot when people tell me I work too much, and I put that in the song. I say, y'all say I work too much. I say you hurt too much. And, yeah. and, 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 
subscribe to the Rooted in Love show for weekly updates and free giveaways. And, and, and it's just me trying to say, like, I came from hurt. I came from struggle. I came from not having that. So for you to tell me I work too much is you not even understand why I work so much. You, you don't understand. Right. Like, I just came from back where I didn't have nothing. You're not trying to go back to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't, you, you can tell me, you can talk about me all you want. I'm going to keep working. I know what the bottom looked like. Right. I know what all that hurt looked like. What? And, and people looking down at you and, and not help you out or something. So man, when I know what I know what I know now, and I know I can go get they might, they might help you. Though. They, they might help you. Then they might talk about you. Right. They talk about you. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. So, so, yeah. Rizzo out there going to get What you got going on today? Hey, man. You know, no success. You know, lawyer game. I got work. a lawyer game. Okay. <laughs> I done put in that work in the cold. Rich man, man in the house. house. Ain't got no shop yet, so that's what it look like. There you go. It's cold. It's cold outside. It's cold outside. It's cold outside. It's cold outside. Yeah, every day out there work. It's thirty because I just came from the food pantry right. earlier, and it was twenty something. Yeah, it was, so, it was cold. I, I, I took uh, my son Jack to the skate park, and I that watched real. I watched from the car. So I'm <laughs> like, you go out there, I'm, I'm watching from the car. It's, the wheels still rolled in the car. Yeah, I don't know how they still rolling. I just, I just pray. <laughs> Picking up boxes, my fingers was just gone. Mm. But yeah, we just That's really. Getting the, letting the audience really know about where we come from, that like give a little our background to understand why we always talking about we rooting in love and you know we we embedded in this this family thing we talk about. It's it's not yeah. just a front. We don't just do this for the cameras and for the for social media. Yeah, like this is what y'all see right now. I say this is multiple days a week. We all together like part this. part of part of the uh I guess the origin of that is to realize and understand. That was, that was, I won't say that's really all we had, but when you, money, money cover a whole lot of stuff. You got, you got a whole lot of money. Any problem come up, your car break down, it don't matter. True. Throw it in the shop. You, you, you ain't got no food. You can go buy steaks and fillet. When you, when you, when you break it all the way down to the low gravy, when you just break it on down, right. love, that love that was in the house, that one of the things that the people that we thought had a lot, they might not have had what we had growing up. Right. And they right. parents might have had money, but, yeah, we we had know. each other. We we I, I knew my parents loved me. Even I used to think about it all the time. Like why why do people? Yeah. What's the attraction? Why did everybody want to be around our family, bro? It's it's for real? We look like man, we ain't got nothing. <laughs> bro, we ain't got nothing. Like, <laughs> we all over here. That's true. But it, it was just that that feeling of uh, being a part of a brotherhood. Yeah. And, yeah. and then it wasn't a gang. You had to get jumped in. All we made yeah. rough. Feel like, <laughs> you get a little bit. We yeah. were rough though. Y'all yeah. know we were rough. It was country rough though. Yeah, it was country man. That's all we knew. The wrestling, playing. Yeah, we thought that was normal. But it's it's a uh, we 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 embodied that feeling. Mm-hmm. And, and it attracted the people that was around us. Even to this day, you know, I, we get new brothers, sisters every yeah, day. That we wanted, we, we got the ninth Robinson. We the ninth Robinson. We may have a ninth Robinson competition, so everybody who wants to be the yeah. ninth Robinson. I got you friends think, watching this. Yeah. If you think yeah. you're the ninth yeah. Robinson, we can give you a date and uh, yeah, come on. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So let us let us know why you think you're the ninth Robinson. They already some of them already put in bids for it. They're gonna laugh when they but say it. It ain't easy. People think it's easy. Nah. They make it easy, and it's like, man, it, it does come with some some uh, some dysfunction. Because mm-hmm. I always tell you, I'm not ashamed to admit we we are we are we are functional dysfunction. Like functional dysfunction. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> we're, we're, we're perfectly imperfect. Yeah, disagree. Can't just like everybody. Up. Up. <laughs> yeah, let's sum it up right there. Right. We, we we different minds, you know, different different beliefs on things. Sometimes different yeah. different. So we talk about uh, it. You know, we we grew up in the church. We're not throwing hands. We grew up in in, no, uh, in you know. holiness, like which is a uh, a very strict belief system, and mm-hmm. I. I always, even though I'm not really in it like I was when I grew up, I still attribute that to where I'm at now because uh, it kept us out of the foundation. It, it, yeah. it, it embeds a conscious in you that when you're around the wrong thing or around something uh-huh. you know you shouldn't do that, that conscious start talk, being like, okay, yeah. you got to get out of here. Like, this ain't where you're supposed to be at. Yeah. This ain't how you bleed. It's you know? an automatic thing. I, and so I always think that's important. I always appreciate my parents for. Having us around there growing up. Me, can you just Im- that. imagine how, how it would be if you just didn't have that? Because we always had, we always had, always had like a yeah. box or a guide yeah. or some rules and regulations. But, and then it, it would have been slick and mom, like some mom that was soft. 
Yeah. But when dad go to work, it kind of get tighter. <laughs> she was she was tight with the rope. You know, yeah. whatever he uh, said, that what it was. I tell people you know that all I mean? the time. We we grew up people thinking that dad was the enforcer, that dad was the one you were scared of. Dad let you off, man. man like, dad, you look sad. Dad, no, pre trial. Dad, 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 <laughs> dad like pre trial. Hey, hey, dad can put you on punishment, right? He don't put me on punishment. Like you grounded for a week. Yup. And then you let you let it go for about one day, about two yeah, days, you let it, it go. He come he's home the way he takes it when he comes from work, just be outside. Yeah. Just stand on the porch. So I'm gonna be outside. He's gonna be so tired, he's gonna walk by here, boy. What you doing? And you're like, Yeah, I got it. You got it. Right. Yeah, my wigs in the front. Right. Yeah, my wigs you out. Pretty sure I can But mom? No, you got to do your whole bit. She said a week. She mean a week. Mom mean a week. And mom tell you to sit on that couch for three hours. You gonna sit on that couch. I don't care if you gotta use Mom ever yelled at you. Man, I don't know. In your life. I don't remember. That's the scary part. She never yelled. She ain't yelling at you. I can't remember one time that her just That's the scary people right there. Losing control and snapping on me. Even when you back in the whip, she ain't get loud with you. She calmly told me to get in the room and calmly got it. And took care of business and then go sit down and talk. Oh, man. You know what? Like that, these young parents do now. When you get whooped by mom, it ain't come here. Let me hug you. No, no, nah, go over there, sit down, get away, dry it up. And then it's supposed to be quiet, quick. Dry up. I'm like, oh, oh, I have students that ask me. You know, I'm teaching in middle school. Students ask me, Mrs. Oh, you don't never yell. I, and I always think about how moms. I'm like, real gangsters don't don't speak loud. We make people listen harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm be like, gonna tell you take that trash out. <laughs> yeah. When somebody get a low, that low voice and you see yeah. that serious face, they. You know, you, it's, yeah. it's real. You know, yeah, be you quiet. Know, what is it, hey, Go man. ahead and run and go get it. Or, or, or what? Because they, they ain't playing. If people cussing and fussing me, I never, never, you know, that don't I move with that. Because I'm like, you ain't. You ain't trying to do that. Don't get you over. <laughs> if you was, you would have. That was, now, that's one of the things I was kind of glad about that our parent. Now, when you, when you did get in trouble, I can't remember. Well, yeah. I about to say I can't remember really getting punished for nothing, but it did one one well known know. family incident. Well known, <laughs> it's well known. Oh, uh, well, I felt like I was wronged in getting my whooping. I I I, I don't hold it against my daddy for whooping all of them. Yeah, whooping for the team. Man, I had to take one for the yeah, team, man. But uh, you know, we we didn't really get in trouble for nothing. So you actually, when we talk about getting in trouble. And, you know, punish them, whatnot. Right. You actually did something. I think. I think yeah. a lot of people when we were growing up, they assumed because dad was a pastor and because dad did have this rough gangster background from being a drug dealer and just being this like fight all the time, uh -huh. being in jail, got out of jail, and they thought that we were getting like just really strictly disciplined. Cause we weren't acting like that. That, that, that was fun though. Yeah. He, 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 he was so much fun, man. man. He never, he never just, just beat us like that for no. any reason. Like, if, like you said, if you, if you got a beating, you did something. something. <laughs> like, like, I'm you fighting this school. I got yeah. an F or something. Like you ain't, wasn't no failures coming. Right, in. Like, you, you good enough. You smart enough to get into school and take care of business without getting. Man, trouble. the thing you no, no, know, man. If a teacher called him Ooh, and yeah, teacher if, called if a school or a teacher called dad at work, yeah. that's yeah. an automated work. Yeah. yeah. Like you ain't you yeah. ain't gonna interrupt his work day and mess up when he when he, his check get cut short because you wanna act up. <laughs> you already know. That'd be the stuff right there. That's yeah. that's that was one of the ones where he's like, oh, man, you really gonna call my dad? And I'm like, please don't man. call my dad. They called him. Let's work I'm, this I'm, thing. I'm yeah. some, some money on my shirt for my birthday. People pin him, you know, regular right. pinning. They said, uh you want to go to detention or you want to call your dad? Man, throw me in there. Quit, right? <laughs> Look, don't even, don't even wait. Oh, so you that scared of your dad? We gonna call him. I saw, oh, man. <laughs> he pulled up in that old red truck. He had a cop from Captain Perry. Right, <laughs> man. And you already know what it was. The whole right home was quiet. So now you like, talk. you don't know what's gonna happen. You rubbing your legs. You don't know what's gonna happen. It's that nervous. By the time whooping got down, I was so tense. Like I was in tight. <laughs> Boy, I remember the I, I knew I was not get no more calls. Now. I ain't get no more ride. calls after that. Kids need that now. Get that yeah, ride. Yeah, man, that ride. Hey, that, that, that perfected that technique. And I, I've used it. I ain't gonna lie, I've used it because when you get your child in the car, and once you get on that road, I like to get on the interstate. Yeah, you, know, it's right. 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 you yeah. got to you got to take it. I'm about to yeah, this is what I got to say. Yeah. And he, yeah. he was good at that. Like he was especially them rides to church, like long run, like he was yeah. you remember just driving to like Cochran, Georgia, was that four and a half hours? Mm -hmm. And you just hear them talking about the Bible the whole way. Yeah, whole sermon way. in church and the sermon all the way back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good though. I, I man, you know, you know that was so oh, he, was, he he also though at the same time though, where he gets you and get on to you. He'll pull you to the side 
and, 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 and pep you up. Yeah. In a way, like he ain't gonna let you stay sad too long. Right. Like I said, that was the, kind of the difference between him and mom. You know what I mean? Like he he'll get on to you if, I, if he put me. Like later on, he could be that same day. He'll come down and kind of explain some more why he had to oh, do yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Maybe, he, always, maybe he's always answer. You got anything you gotta say? No, yeah. like he's straight. <laughs> but y'all know that y'all know that after every whipping, yeah. he gave you the opportunity to speak your truth. truth. That is I true. never forgot that, but he always say, "Now y'all got anything y'all want to say?" Mm-hmm. You be you like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying. I'm good. Oh no, man. Uh, yeah, but so yeah, yeah that's good stuff, man. man. We gonna uh, take a quick break right here and then. Catch y'all next week with some more. We just going back in history. Absolutely. We stay rooted. We stay rooted in love. We stay grounded. We get our strength from above. We stay rooted. We stay rooted in love. We stay grounded. We get our strength from above. We stay rooted. We stay rooted in love. We stay grounded. We get our strength from above. We stay rooted. Rooted. Stay rooted. Brought to you by 8 Robinsons TV and Yellow Tub Creative.